Despite making billions in tax-deductible donations to his own philanthropy, the charity apparently gave away less than the minimum required amount in recent years, and Mr. Musk may have to pay the price because of it. A new investigative piece in the New York Times over the weekend takes a deep look into Musk's charitable foundation and crunches the numbers on how Musk's donations often support the billionaire's own interests. Joining us now is one of the authors of that piece, David Farenthold. He's an investigative reporter for the New York Times who covers nonprofits. Mr. Farenthold, welcome. Good to see you. Let me make sure I unpack your story correctly. I found it to be a fascinating story, by the way. Uh, one is that Mr. Musk has given a large slug, I guess, of stock and other capital to a foundation that he uh, is one of the key, key board members of, that he controls. There's nothing wrong with that. Doesn't, isn't that what Bill Gates does with the Gates Foundation? That's right. There's nothing wrong with giving a lot of money or, in this case, appreciated Tesla stock to a foundation that's got your name on it or a foundation that you run, or in this case, both. And, but, the, but the problem arises because there is a requirement that that foundation expend a certain percentage of its capital uh, every year. How much did Mr. Musk put into the foundation and how much has it spent? He put in about $7 billion worth of Tesla stock. <clears throat> and you're right. When you put money into a foundation that you run, you're basically giving yourself a job. You're giving yourself a responsibility. The uh, tax law requires that every foundation give away about 5% of its assets every year. That's to keep you from just stockpiling money in your foundation and not helping the world. And so in this case, the Musk Foundation was required to give $350 million in 2022, which is the last year for which we have numbers, and they only gave away about 160. Uh, in fact, right now, as, or at least as the end of 2022, they were $234 million behind of where they should have been in terms of the money that they should have given out, which was the fourth largest of any foundation in the country. In the nonprofit world, how common is that, David? It's not very common. I mean, there, there, uh, there's no immediate penalty for it. You get a year-long grace period to give that money away. But as I said, it's very, very uncommon for foundations to have that much money short, to have that, that kind of shortfall. This would be kind of like a pension uh, plan that is not putting in enough to cover its benefits. So, uh, to, to cover its benefits, so it would have a shortfall there. And, and do they have time? You just said that they have time to make it up. In other words, if you have a deficit in 2022, you might get another year to make good on that 5% that you owe? That's right. In 2023, they had, they had that year to give away the $234 million that they had left over, they owed from 2022, plus the 5% for 2023. And if at the end of 2023, they hadn't given away their shortfall from the year before, they'd owe a 30% penalty tax to the IRS. Well, of the money that the charity is giving away, what's it going to? About half, uh, as far as we could tell, about half of it has gone to things that are associated with Mr. Musk himself. Uh, for instance, it, uh, after one of his rockets blew up in South Texas uh, near the SpaceX launch site, an hour later he started announcing donations from the Musk Foundation to schools and downtown beautification in that area. In another instance, he had a customer who paid him to rent a SpaceX rocket and be flown into orbit. As part of that space flight, the customer said, I'm going to raise $200 million for St. Jude's. Uh, the rocket lands, and they haven't gotten the $200 million. They're short. Musk kicks in $55 million from the Musk Foundation to get his customer over that charitable pledge. A few months later, the same customer orders three more flights from SpaceX. He also used the money to start schools or build schools that are located right next to his business operations in rural areas, basically to provide schooling for his employees' children. But, and, and some of those children who benefited from that school were, in fact, his own children, correct? That's right. The first year that he started this school called the Ad Astra School, it was when SpaceX was still located in California, and he was still located in California. Of the school's first 14 students, five of them were his own children. How closely is the board involved in the decisions about where to donate money and whether to donate money? Well, it's important to know who the board is. So the Tr Musk Foundation, despite its very large size, has no paid staff. Uh, it only has three board members who are all volunteers. There's Mr. Musk himself, there's his money manager, Jared Birchall, and there's a woman who works for the money manager. So it's him and two of his very closest employees. Collectively, they work two hours and six minutes per week on the foundation. So uh, we asked all three board members, including Mr. Musk, how does that work? You know, does the board meet? Do they ever challenge you? Or do they, you know, they ever challenge Mr. Musk and ask him, you know, do you really want to give money to that? 
and they didn't respond. Uh, but as you can tell, he seems to have a very outsized influence on where the money goes. Has he responded? No. We sent him a lot of questions last week, and he has not responded yet.